morning and welcome to worship at the Wallace Presbyterian Church in Wallace, North Carolina. Welcome all who are here with us in person and those who are watching live stream and perhaps at a later time. We're glad to be with all of you as we gather on a beautiful fall day to worship the Lord our God. We have some beautiful flowers in the sanctuary today and they are celebrating Dan and Tanya Robinson's 30th wedding anniversary, which is tomorrow, and congratulations. And thank you for putting those beautiful flowers in. Um, today we take up a special offering that we've been promoting for about a month or more um, in response to Hurricane Ida. And you can put an offering in today, send one to the church mail, drop it through the mail slot in the church office building, or even contribute online. The offering will be divided between the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program and a ministry called RINO, an outreach ministry of St. Charles Avenue Presbyterian Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. On November 7th, we will have a congregational meeting following worship uh, for the purpose of hearing a report from the nominating committee and electing three elders and seeing the budget for next year and acting on suggested changes in my terms of call and having our corporation meeting. You um, parents, I think, got an email about this from Geneva. Um, but we will not have children's church today. Geneva is out of town, but there are activity bags in the back if you did not get one for your children or one for your each child. Um, please feel free to get up and go back and get one of those. But children's church will resume next week. Um, you may notice on Sunday mornings when you come in that there's always a slide on the screen that has a picture and the date and a title. Uh, that's the work of Bill Butler. Uh, he and I talked during the week about the sermon and about the theme for worship, and then he'll send me a slide and say, this is what I have in mind. So these are the selections from Bill, and they're always very uh, interesting and thought-provoking. And he sent me this picture uh, this week of a painting somebody did of the story that I'm going to read today, and it has an accompanying poem that somebody wrote about this painting, and I wanted to share that poem with you. It's by Julia Stankova, a Bulgarian poet and artist, and this is, the, so I invite you to look at the painting while I read this poem. At first, we hardly notice him that famous blind beggar from St. Mark's. But then there he is, half naked and squatting in the top left-hand corner of the frame, yet strangely positioned as if waiting to be troubled by both the crowd and Jesus, as if the painter was there just before the story began, just before his howl shatters the picture we see here. But more strange than this are the eyes, the black dilated pupils of the crowd framed dead center over which he and Jesus from opposite ends of the painting are about to see each other for the first time. So we will hear about blind Bartimaeus and Jesus in a few minutes. Elder Wayne Castine's leading worship today. Good morning. Please join me in the opening sentences in the bulletin. Take heart, for we are gathered in the Father's presence. Get up, for we are beckoned by the risen Son. God is calling us, for we are united by the Spirit. Come, let us worship God as we pray together, saying, O God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we are gathered in your presence. Stand by the side, 
with those who have gone before us, who have lived the mystery of your grace, and responded by following you on the way. May your Holy Spirit guide us as we follow you to the places that you are called to the church to be. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 452, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Despite God's promise to be with us always, God's face is hidden from us by our sins, and we forget God's mercy in the blindness of our hearts. With the confidence of the children of God and trusting in God's grace through Jesus Christ, let us humbly confess our sin as we come to God with our unison prayer, our silent prayers, and our assurance. Let us pray together. Merciful God, our thoughts and deeds too often do not reflect the grace you show us. Our speech and actions too often do not proclaim your salvation. Forgive us, Lord, for the sins that we bear, both as individuals and as your church. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Our teacher, let us see again. Give us the courage to take heart in your grace. Give us the strength to get up. Give us the wisdom to hear your calling. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Lord, hear our prayers. Jesus is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Hear then the good news. In and through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us sing God's praises for his mercy in our lives.
Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children to join me up here for the children's sermon. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope y'all are good. Nice to see all of you. Oh, here comes Clara. Hey, Clara. You see that man right there on the front row? Dr. Dan, wave at us. That's Dr. Dan. He takes care of my eyes. Because you know what? If I take these off, I really can't see much. I can see that y'all are there. If I... Uh, if I look out there, things are really blurry, and I can't read a thing without these glasses on. But when I go see Dr. Dan, and he checks me out, and then he gives me the right kind of glasses, everything's clear, and I can see again. And it's like a miracle, because without the glasses, I wouldn't be able to do much anything. So I brought an old pair of glasses. Let's me, get Mr. Bill to show them on the screen. So there's an old pair of glasses. And I brought a Bible. And I have a question for you. How is the Bible like a pair of glasses? Hmm. That's right. That's exactly right. The glasses help you. Yes. Okay. Wow. Did y'all hear that? They both can help you see the path. Amen. <laughs> I think she preached my sermon today. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. They're all preaching my sermon. This is wonderful. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's exactly right. Yes. 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 So let me show you a picture that somebody made. And I'll show it on the screen so everybody out there can see it. You know, it's kind of a funny looking picture. <laughs> but this is, a, you, know, you want to look at the screen and see it? So that's a, a drawing of a man named John Calvin. He lived a long time ago. And I don't think he wore glasses like that. Somebody put those glasses on. But John Calvin, he said that the Bible is like a pair of glasses for the exact reasons that every one of you just said. He said, just like glasses help you see better, just like these glasses help me a whole lot. Y'all are all kind of blurry and fuzzy. And then I look on and I get a clearer picture. He said, just like glasses do that, the Bible gives us a clearer picture, helps us see God, learn more about God, helps us follow the path, all the things that y'all said. Do we do it perfectly? No, because we're, nobody's perfect. But, you know, when I take the glass, yes. God, say that again. God believes that everybody's perfect. Oh, okay. And Jesus, yes. So if I open the Bible up there to read, let me look up the story I was going to read today. And so it's over here in the 10th chapter of Mark. And if I got up there and I took my glasses off, I have no idea. I can't see, I can't see, that's even worse. 
but if I put my glasses on, I can read clearly. Does that mean I know everything about God? No, no. But if I read the Bible, it helps me know God better and to see God better. Yes, Claire. What if somebody doesn't know about God or Jesus? That's a very good question, Claire. Well, one thing is we can tell them about God and Jesus, either by what we say or how we treat them. Um, the other answer to that question that I think is an answer to that question is they may not know about God, but God knows about them, and I think God will take care of them. But if we have a chance to tell them about God and Jesus, maybe, maybe that would make us like a pair of glasses. We could help them see about God and Jesus. Think about that. Yeah. What if somebody is blind? That's a good question. If they can't see, well, people... That's right. Glasses won't help. And so some people that are blind and glasses won't help, then they, they might have a, a dog that helps them or they have somebody that helps them get around. They can read using Braille or they have audio books where they can. So you're right. Sometimes glasses can't help, but that's why the Bible isn't a pair of glasses. The Bible is like a pair of glasses because if you hear the word and somebody tells you the word, it's like having a pair of glasses on. Yes? Someone can have their friend take their glasses and they can have their feet. Yes. Um, what if the person um, lost their healing and they don't know about God and Jesus? Say that one more time. What if someone lost their eyesight and their healing and they don't know about God and Jesus? Well, um. <laughs> The question is, what if somebody lost their hearing and they can't see and they don't know about God and Jesus? Hmm. I would have to say that God loves them and God knows that and God will care for them. And, and God can help them. Okay, yes, and God can help them. Mary, we'll hear what you say and then we'll have a prayer. Well, it would be it would be very hard, but some people are able to do that because people help them, and maybe by helping them, not they can't really see, but maybe they can come to know about God because people help them and love them. So maybe that's like what I said. Maybe we can all be like a pair of glasses by the way we treat people and love them that will help them see God. That, man, y'all, y'all are great. Y'all really know a lot about God and Jesus. And I appreciate it. Let's have a prayer together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that we have glasses for people that need them to help us see better. Thank you for doctors that know what to do to help us so that we can see better. We thank you for your word, for the Bible, that helps us see with our hearts like we sang in, in our song this morning. Lord, help us to see you more clearly, but Lord, help us to be like a pair of glasses that could help somebody else see you better and to love you more. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all for coming up. I mean, how wonderful was that? <laughs> wonderful. Would you pray with me that our eyes would be opened as we hear God's word today? Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, 
May your Holy Spirit give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know the hope to which Christ has called us, the riches of his glorious inheritance among us, and the greatness of his power for those who believe. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Psalm chapter 119, verses 12 through 18. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal, bountif deal bountifully with your servant so that I may live and observe your word. Open my eyes so that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. We're going to be in the Gospel of Mark a few more weeks. Um, today's story is the end of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem that we've been on for September and October, and it's the healing of blind Bartimaeus, and I invite you to listen for God's Word. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples in a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In February 1969, rock and blues fans were excited when it was announced that Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Steve Winwood had formed a new group. Clapton and Baker's band, Cream, had recently broken up. Steve Winwood's band, Traffic, was on a break. In May of that year, bassist Rick Gretsch from the band Family joined the new group. And the new band was hailed as a super group because of the talents and the skills of the four musicians. Hopes were high for a great success. And in fact, the band took its name from the confidence that people had in the future of the band. Eric Clapton himself thought that the band's name described everyone's self-belief that the band would be successful no matter what happened. The band was called Blind Faith. Six months later, after recording one album and finishing one three-month tour, Blind Faith broke up. Their one album, which was also called Blind Faith, had only six songs, but it included one written by Eric Clapton called Presence of the Lord. He called it a song of gratitude to God and to some friends 
who had helped him overcome his drug addiction. And at the time, he made a deeper spiritual commitment as a Christian. And the lyrics to the song are very few and very simple. I have finally found a way to live just like I never could before. I know that I don't have much to give, but I can open any door. Everybody knows the secret. Everybody knows the score. I have finally, finally found a way to live in the color of the Lord. Everybody knows the secret. Everybody knows the score. I have finally found a place to live in the presence of the Lord. You know, Bartimaeus, the blind beggar beside the road at Jericho, could have sung that song. I finally found a way to live, just like I never could before. I know I don't have much to give but I can open any door. Bartimaeus didn't have much to give, maybe nothing more than his cloak. He depended on what others chose to give him as he sat by the side of the road day in and day out. But when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was headed his way, he took a chance. Some might say he acted out of blind faith. And he cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he finally found a place to live in the presence of the Lord. When Jesus met Bartimaeus there outside of Jericho, he had almost reached the end of his journey to Jerusalem. It was just another 15 miles from Jericho to Jerusalem, about a day's walk. And all along the way, Jesus had been telling his disciples what waited for him in Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And then they will hand him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him. And three days later, he will rise again. Now, when Jesus headed out on his journey to Jerusalem, he healed another blind man way back in chapter 8 at a place called Bethsaida. And now here at the end of the journey, we hear about Jesus healing the blind beggar, Bartimaeus at Jericho. And in between these two bookend stories, over and over again, the disciples don't get what Jesus is talking about. They don't see who Jesus really is and what Jesus' mission is really all about. And so the two blind men who receive their sight, who see Jesus, stand in a stark contrast to the disciples and to a lot of other people along the way. And as someone has noted, these stories about these two men who once were blind but now can see illustrate exactly what Jesus teaches all along the way about being his follower, to come to Jesus and so to see, to see and so to follow Jesus. Pun intended, the story of Bartimaeus helps us see, helps us look back and see what has come before, what it means to be a true follower of Jesus. And the story of Bartimaeus helps us see, helps us look ahead and see what is coming up. He calls out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. He's the only person that calls him that. And it's just like the crowds shout when Jesus enters Jerusalem on Palm Sunday in the very next chapter of Mark's Gospel. And so this story about Bartimaeus is definitely a healing story. It has all the components of a healing story. But it's also a call story. I want you to listen again to one verse, verse 49. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man and said to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. Bartimaeus called out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And then Jesus called Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus followed him on the way, which is exactly what Jesus has been doing and teaching his disciples all along the way. Timothy Atkin Jones wrote an article called More Than a Miracle Story. This is a story of a call. And he says, Bartimaeus leads the way 
For he recognizes his healing not as something to be selfishly enjoyed, but as a call to discipleship. Jesus tells him to go his own way because his faith is made as well, but Bartimaeus chooses instead to follow Jesus on the road. When blessed, when healed, when delivered by God, the temptation is to take our gift and to walk away. Bartimaeus reminds us that a disciple always follows and that the way to life is always behind Jesus. We've been making this journey with Jesus and his disciples on the road now since the beginning of September. The road can also be understood as the way, just like the children taught us in the children's sermon. So there's more to the story than just a physical walk from Caesarea Philippi up in the north to Jericho and Jerusalem down in the south. You remember when Jesus said, where I am going, you will be there also? And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. When Bartimaeus regained his sight, he followed Jesus on the road into Jerusalem, but he followed him on the way. He followed Jesus, who is the way. And isn't it interesting, and isn't it powerful, that when Bartimaeus was blind, he was sitting beside the road, beside the way. But when he could see, he was on the road. He was on the way with Jesus, following Jesus. If you use these days for daily devotions, you will remember that this last Thursday's devotion was based on this story from Mark. And it's called Christ Our Healer. I think it's worth recalling. So when you pass a panhandler at an intersection, what do you feel? Bartimaeus counts on the pity of passers-by as he begs alms on the road out of Jericho. Part of the surprise of this story is that Bartimaeus, the blind man, sees Jesus better than the crowd already journeying with Jesus. From outside the congregation of Jesus' followers, Bartimaeus calls Jesus by his messianic title, Son of David. A few Jesus' followers reluctantly show Bartimaeus the way to Jesus by their sight, but it is Bartimaeus who shows them the way to Jesus by faith. And perhaps it is the crowd that is the most to be pitied. And then it goes on to say, when we pity others whom we deem less fortunate, do we disqualify ourselves from following them on the road of radical dependence and true faith to Jesus? When we insist on keeping quiet about our spiritual poverty and our inner brokenness in order to maintain a decorum, do we disqualify ourselves from a transformative encounter with Jesus? Perhaps we are the ones most in need of healing. Bartimaeus wasn't perfect, what human being is. But he stands in contrast to the disciples and to other people on the road in his request of Jesus and in following Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? It's the very same question, word for word, that Jesus asked James and John. The very same question. And they wanted glory, they wanted power, they wanted authority, they wanted recognition. Bartimaeus wanted mercy and to receive his sight. And when he could see Jesus, he followed him, just as Jesus had been teaching all along the way. But Bartimaeus also stands in contrast to that rich man we heard about recently who walked away sorrowful from Jesus' invitation, follow me. Do you remember? When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. The rich man couldn't put down what he had to follow Jesus on the road or on the way, but Bartimaeus did. There are so many 
interesting details in today's story, but this one stands out as kind of strange, kind of odd. Why do you suppose Mark tells us that Bartimaeus threw off his cloak before he jumped up and went to Jesus? I mean, the story would have worked just fine if it had said he sprang up and came to Jesus. It's been suggested that Bartimaeus left behind everything he had, which was nothing more than a cloak. Just as Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and James, and John left their fishing nets and followed Jesus, just as Matthew left his tax booth and followed Jesus, Bartimaeus left his old life by the side of the road when he regained his sight and saw Jesus and followed him on the way. First thing Tuesday morning, Dr. Dan texted me, just sent you email, song Two Coats. So I checked my emails and I clicked on a YouTube link to Patty Lovelace's song called Two Coats. It will probably make you think about Bartimaeus throwing off his cloak by the side of the road and finding a new life by following Jesus on the way. Two coats were before me, an old and a new. I asked my sweet master, oh, what must I do? The old coat was ugly, so tattered and worn. The other, a new one, had never been worn. I'll tell you the best thing that I ever did. I took off the old coat and put on the new. The first man was earthy and made from the ground. We bore all his image the whole world around. The next was my savior from heaven so fair. He bought me this new coat. You now see me wear. Now this coat, it suits me and keeps me warm. It's good in the winter. It's good in the storm. My savior has dressed me in a garment so rare. He bought me this new coat. You now see me wear. I'll tell you the best thing that I ever did. I took off the old coat and put on the new. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I finally found a place to live in the presence of the Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Let us pray. Great God, through Jesus Christ, open our eyes so that we may see. Open the eyes of our mind to learning and understanding. Open the eyes of our heart to love and compassion. Open the eyes of our soul to see Jesus and follow him on the way. Amen. We pray today. Um, I sent prayer requests out last night. Um, let's pray for Gene Parks, for Hill and Denny and Donna Lanier, for Robert Matthews, for Linda Carlton Wells, for Effie Mobley, for Helen Glass, for Molly Lowry, for Cameron Lee, for Shirley Carlton. Let us pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us enough to send your Son to live among us, to bring life, to repair the relationship that we had broken with you. We thank you that you loved us enough that your Son gave his life for us, that we might have life, that we might be righteous, not through our own doing, but through his grace. We thank you, Lord, that you call us to be your people. 
to show your love, to show others your promise, to share the covenant with them. We ask for your forgiveness when we don't live as the people you call us to be. We are in awe of the love that you give us, a forgiving love that calls us again and again to follow you. And Lord, we pray that we will as individual people and as a church. Lord, we thank you that Jesus Christ came and healed and that he heals still today. We thank you that your will is for life, that you are the creator, that you sustain us in all of life. So Lord, with those promises, we pray for those we know who are sick. And we ask your comforting presence to be with them. We ask for your healing touch. We pray for their doctors and their nurses, for their caregivers. Lord, hear us as we pray for those near and dear to us. As we pray for Jean, for Hill and Denny and Donna, for Robert, for Linda, for Effie, for Helen, for Molly, for Cameron, for Shirley. Lord, you know the, the hurts of our hearts, the cares that we carry, the burdens that we have. Help us to respond to Jesus who says, come to me all you who are weary and I will give you rest. Lord, we continue to pray for all the people that are affected in every way by the pandemic. We pray for our teachers, for our students, for school staff, for superintendents and administrators who are faced with an unbelievably hard challenge in educating our children. Lord, give them strength because they are tired. Give them wisdom that they need. Let them know that we support them. We pray for families who are struggling to, to know how to make things work. We pray for doctors and nurses and first responders and EMTs and scientists and all who are trying hard to get us through this pandemic. We pray for business people who are struggling and who have been hurt. We pray for churches, for pastors and elders and church members whose churches aren't the same right now. And the list goes on and on, Lord, and we pray for your guidance and for your strength through these days. Most of all, we thank you for your love for us in Jesus Christ, a love that is unconditional, a love that calls us to follow on the way. Help us to do that. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I know I've said this before, but it's just really meaningful. Um, this special offering we're taking up today, you know, I was thinking when I got in my car today, it's been like two months since Hurricane Ida um, hit down the Gulf Coast. That seems like a long time ago in some ways. 
Um, it's been three years since Hurricane Florence hit our community and did such damage, hurt so many people in our church. We're still helping people after Hurricane Florence. So this offering, don't think it's late going down to New Orleans and, and wherever else it ends up to help people with Hurricane Ida. It will come as a blessing for those groups that are helping respond. We thank you for your faithful and generous giving. Let us pray. Generous and loving God, we thank and praise you for the relationship you have offered us through Jesus Christ. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you, remind us of the covenant you have made. If you will be my people, I will be your God. Receive what we give in gratitude for that invitation. Help us to be your people, reflected in our love for you and for all your children. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ who gave all there was to give for us. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 5. May God bless our eyes and be in our seeing. May Christ bless our eyes and widen our gaze. May the Spirit bless our eyes and sharpen our vision so that we may see and experience what life in communion with Jesus Christ can be. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Amen.